How's it going everyone? Thanks so much for tuning in. And if you've downloaded the plans and are attempting the build, that's just fantastic and I hope everything's going smoothly so far. If you're new to the videos and you'd like to attempt the build, then visit the site in the description box and download the plans and you can follow along. And I hope that you can get to this stage by the end of this video. And that is we've got our template jig that we made to cut out the holes in our chassis and that's going to come in incredibly handy because we can start to build our amplifier outside of the chassis it's because the chassis walls make it very difficult for you to get inside and get at the wires get at all the fiddly bits and that's why it's best to start building the amplifier outside of the chassis and your template jig is going to allow you to do that and we're going to cut out the turret board and we're going to put all the turrets in, swage them. We're going to mount that on the template jig. We're also going to mount the tube sockets and we're going to lay the 6.3 volt filament wires in place. And I must stress that we're not soldering anything in place yet. We're merely laying them so that we can make sure that they're in the right place before we do any soldering later on. And so without further ado, let's get on with the video. Alrighty, go grab your laminated turret board flat work. If you've bought it, no problem. Or if you want to make it yourself, go check out my video on how to build it. it runs you through the whole process of how to laminate your own composite material. And also grab the template for the turret board and that tells you exactly where to drill the holes. At this point, I'm just going to check whether our, you know, there's a little bug. At this point, I'm just going to check if our mounting holes line up. And now, if, if we've drilled our holes accurately, this hole and this hole here should should be aligned, and they're pretty good. All of the holes on this turret board are drilled at 2.8 millimeters and that's to house the base of the turret all except for these four mounting holes and they're for the turret board standoffs and I'm going to drill them at 3.5 millimeters so it's a good idea to mark them now I made this drilling jig some time ago specifically for drilling holes in turret boards and it's just a it's just a piece of angled alloy screwed onto another piece of flat alloy and whenever you've got the situation where you've got turrets lined up in a row it just enables you to get uniformity with the spacing because it allows you to always be the same spacing from the edge as you move it along I tailor these videos to those people who don't have many tools and that's why I use a, a jig and a hand drill but you can of course drill this however you like you don't have to use a jig you can use a center punch and then drill the holes you can use a drill press if you've got one handy if these mounting holes don't quite fit your chassis then you can certainly make them larger say four millimeter and then they should fit okay once you've drilled all your holes, you can go ahead and take this paper off. I use heavy sandpaper or you can use a scraper. And then I like to just take this down to a nice matte finish. I, I just don't like shininess. But it's completely personal preference, so whatever you like really. Once you've sanded back your tarot board, I've rounded off the corners and tried to make it as neat as possible. Hopefully all your holes have come out accurate and now it's time to put in the turrets. If you have a drill press you can use that to gently press in the turrets. If you don't have a drill press you can just place the turret board on your bench, pop the turret in the hole and just gently knock it in with a wooden mallet.
Once you've got all your turrets in, flip your turret board over and it's time to swage the back of the turret and this will hold it in place. All nicely swaged. Nothing like a good old swaging. Just grab your template that you made before and this is where it comes in very handy because we're going to start to build our circuit upon this outside of the chassis so we're not we're not constricted by the walls of the chassis we've got freedom to move our arms around and a lot more room and the real great thing about using this template is we know that anything we build on this template is going to fit inside our chassis exactly because we made our chassis from this template and the first thing I'm going to do is drill out these socket holes with a force and a bit. Once the holes are drilled out for the sockets, the next thing to do is just take that edge down next to the sockets. Take the edge down one millimeter and that's just to allow for the thickness of the chassis. On to the next stage and I've just got myself a spare piece of plywood here and you can use anything as long as it's flat, a flat piece of MDF if you like and I've just screwed in a couple of pieces of small right angled alloy here and this just allows me to slide in my template and these alloy just simulate the sides of the chassis and you can use anything you like for this you can use scrap wood if you like as long as it's square now I'm just going to place the tube sockets in here and I'm going to screw them in place with a suitably sized screw and at this stage it may pay to clamp your template to the bench just so it doesn't move ultimately your screws will go through into your scrap wood and hold everything in place it's very important at this stage to notice the orientation of the socket here we've got lug 1 pointing upwards in tube V1 and V2 and in tube V3 we've got a number 6 pointing upwards so it's in the reverse orientation. We can screw on our half inch turret board standoffs and we could transfer it to the template jig. If you notice that the remainder of the bolt is longer than the template is thick then just simply drill a hole in your scrap wood just so that the standoff is flush with the template. Grab yourself some 20 AWG wire. I'm using the solid core with the cotton insulation and I like solid core because you can twist it, you can move it around things and it keeps its shape. Also grab yourself a couple of colors of heat shrink. I'm using red and blue and it's 332 inch. Also grab some 1 8 shrink tube and you also need your heat gun. These points here on the turret board uh, with the red and the blue circle represent the 6.3 volt winding that comes from the power transformer and these provide the AC that lights up the filaments of the tube over here and I'll provide an in-depth discussion of what the heck all this means in a separate video coming up soon but all we need to know today is that we're going to join these up with these points here of V3 and then again loop them on to V2 and then again to V1 Cut yourself off a couple of lengths of around about a foot each, 30 centimeters. If you have any off cuts, don't worry, we'll certainly use the wire later on. And if you're using cotton insulated wire, make sure that you wash your hands, make sure that they're nice and clean because 
the cotton gets discolored very easily. Now there's one thing I really like about cotton insulated wire is that you can just pull back the cotton insulation like this and I like to give myself around about half an inch of free copper wire so I can wrap around a turret. I've just put a small band on the end of the wire just so I know which one's which. Right, I'm just going to start twisting these cables and try to make this as neat as possible. I'm just going to keep twisting my cable here, trying to keep everything uniform and nice and neat. I've twisted myself a good five inches of cable and that should probably do us and I'm gonna just I'm just gonna bend that down there over the turret board and onto the template now we've got this screw here or the bolt that's going to go through the the tube socket and I want to be able to get to it and it's going to be a little bit difficult with if the wires are in very tight so I've got I've got myself about a quarter of an inch here of play and I'm going to bring my wires across to the lugs here at this stage you'll cut them off about in there right, what I do here is I put my insulation on first both red cables in lug 5 and I've got both, both blue cables in lug 4 here's where it gets a little bit tricky just run your twisted wire down next to the chassis there just along to the next tube socket this part is a little bit tricky but there's a there's a little bit of technique to this we've got our twisted cable with our extension going up to the tube socket now we're going to have to somehow twist our wire up here and then incorporate it with this wire so that's going to be a little bit hard, but if you make a make a shape with a spare piece of wire like that, all we do is we just we just slip it over the we just slip it over the twisted wire like that, and and it forms that kind of shape. Now from that point, we can just continue our twists with our spare piece of wire and then we can just simply remove that that spare that spare wire and that provides us with the shape that we need just so we can guide our actual wire through and we know that it's going to be a nice, neat tie-in. Now we'll just pop the other cable underneath through the same lug. Easier said than done. There we go. And we'll start to twist that through and just follow our other twists that we made with our spare wire
we'll do the same again for our blue wire that goes up to lug number four we'll get our twisty piece of spare wire and just we'll put that over we'll put that over again We've got V2 wired up pretty well. It's quite nice and neat. I'm fairly happy with that. It's nice and flush with the with the chassis wall there, and that's the hard part over V2. That's that's the hard one. That's quite difficult. So take your time on that one. Just got the remainder V1, and that's a mere formality. We just have to run the wire up to lug number nine and we've got our blue color code there so we just have to run that to lug number four and then that's all done and there we go everything's pretty neat and straight and at right angles and all tucked in nicely against the chassis Right, there's just one final thing to check and that's continuity of the wiring and just to make sure that no wires are snapped or no wires are crossed red wire, when touched with a red wire, should beep It's good and likewise with the blue That's good and when I touch red with blue I should get no beep And likewise with the red and oh. Let's check that one again. And that's all good, everything checks out. Now I can move on to the next stage. Hopefully all of you had the same success with this build so far. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video.